ECCM Conference presents Thy Kingdom Come, Let the Heavens Break Forth. Conference kickoff and prophetic utterances will begin Thursday, November the 20th. Keynote speakers will include Friday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Bishop Joseph Garlington. Find your voice. There is something that God has for you. There is something that God wants you to understand that if you call on him, he will answer you. But you have to call. Saturday night at 7 o'clock p.m. will be Dr. Mark Hanby. We are in a moment in time in the kingdom of God when God wants to unleash a glorious outpouring of his power. We're having trouble hearing the voice of God because we've already got the system fixed. And if it doesn't fit the system, then it can't be God. I'm telling you that God wants to mess up your plans. Closing out this powerful conference on Sunday morning will be none other than Dr. William Roberts. So whatever God has called us to do, if we try to do it in and of our own strength, then we'll get the glory and man will applaud us. But I do not want man to ever applaud me. I alone give God the glory for everything that is ever accomplished in my life or through my life. For without Him, I'm nothing at all. Included in this conference will be a two-day breakthrough session with guest speaker Anisha Freeman. Program. Right, reprogram. So, yes. you got to get yes. rid of the old habits, right? Right. You, well, first, you have to get rid of the thought. You have to change your thought because every, this, every behavior, every decision that you make can be traced to a thought before you do what you do. Thy Kingdom Come, Let the Heavens Break Forth Conference is a prophetic gathering you don't want to miss. I would never do that. And I'm telling you, when people say to me, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, I say, he can't be a gentleman. He's God. He's never been a gentleman. And, and when we were coming up in the charismatic renewal and learned how to pray for people in the denominational churches who were so afraid of getting the Holy Ghost, because that's how we used to say it, and they would say Holy Spirit. And I said, Holy Spirit just sounds a little bit weak. Say Holy Ghost. It's got, it's got more substance to it. Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Get on, a, get on an elevator and wait till the door closes and just say, Holy Ghost. And that they, people start pressing that button. <laughs> something about it. There's something about <laughs> So there's something that God's up to. And, and they, they would say this to me all the time. And I'd just say, I, I don't understand how you're saying the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. Because when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, he threw me on the floor. Literally, I had, I had little peanuts in all my pockets because our services were real long. And, um, and I, I kept my food with me. <laughs> but when, when, when the Holy Spirit touched me, and, that's, and I had this thing developed in which I could tell when God was going to move in the church. And, and I sat with my uncle on, on a certain row. And when I saw that moving, it was started in the choir. And I'd see it coming out like this toward our... And I just said, I'm getting out of here. And I'd go into the men's restroom until that thing passed by. But one night he started on my row. I rolled on the floor back and forth, back and forth. I mean, all those beans were just coming out of my pockets. And the whole while he was doing, I would say, no, no, no. And he wasn't paying me any attention. Because when people say to me, um, he respects you in the sense of he won't, uh, he won't dishonor your will. But I'm telling you, when Saul went to get David from Samuel, he violated his will. Saul went there to get David. The next thing he knows, he's on the ground, rolling out of the, all of his clothes, and he's naked. N-A-K-E-D. Some people pronounce it naked, but it's the same word. <laughs> and it was the Holy Ghost, and he prophesied all night long. He prophesied, no clothes on. <laughs> 
He prophesied. Some people say to me, he would never do that. I said, you don't know what God would never do. And then we said, well, show me another verse. I said, how about Isaiah 20? Isaiah 20, that's when, after breakfast, Isaiah gets up and takes all of his clothes off. And his wife said, where are you going? He says, to prophesy. She says, without clothes? He says, well, that's the way God wants it. And he prophesied for three years with no clothes on. And people would like to say, well, you know, it was, he wasn't really naked, but I took Hebrew in seminary. And so I looked up the word naked in Isaiah, the word naked in Samuel, and the word naked in Genesis. Same word. <laughs> now, well, why would God do that? Now, that's the mystery. See, that's the mystery. But you need to accept that he did it, even if you can't figure out why he did it. So when you want something from God, don't tell him how to give it to you. Somebody said, I'm going to give you a gift, but here's what I want you to do with it. And I said, no, you can tell me what you want me to do with it, or you can tell me it's a gift, but you can't tell me both. If it's a gift, I can do anything I want to with it. But if you want me to do something with it, I can do that if I want to do that. But if I don't, then you can keep it. So the Holy Spirit comes to us. You're getting this in a minute. He comes to us and he says, you know. And he says, well, how do I know? Because you know me. And then he says, have I been so long with you and yet you have not come to know me? You have not come to know me, Philip. He who has, come on, seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, read with me, please. I do not speak I do not speak of my own authority or my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me does his works. Believe me, say that please. Believe. believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Truly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, come on. Come on, let's read that loud. Come on. He who believes in me, the works that... Come on. He will do also and because I go to the Father. Let's read this one more time, please. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Look, just look, wait, hold, hold right there. The works that I do, he will do also. So what, what did Jesus do? Whatever Jesus did, if you just want to stop right there, you got great church already. The works that I do, he will do also. What did he do? He turned water into wine. He made bread, multiplied fishes and loaves, walked on water, healed the sick, raised the dead, cast out demons, made eyeballs. And those are the works that he did. How many of you just like to do what he did? Just look, look, God, let's just let us do what you did. We'll be happy. But he says you don't have to stop there. He says, and greater, come on, say it, and then these he will do because I go to the Father. Now, when, when we encounter something in the Scripture that we, that we are challenged by, because we don't want to believe that something Jesus said we can do, we can do. So what we say is he must have meant. He must, he, no, I, don't, I, don't believe, I don't believe anybody can do greater works than Jesus, but Jesus is saying he can if he believes in him. Greater than thee shall he do because I go to the Father. The works that I do, let's get excited about that. We saw some of those works this, this, this afternoon. Yeah. Amen. How many got touched this afternoon? It was amazing. I mean, absolutely amazing, and I'm watching this, and there, I don't know where the sisters who came up, who had the, the first lady you prayed for, um, hepatitis C, and she was on the floor, and she just, and I, I, I said, I said, I said, whoa, <laughs> but she was feeling for something. What was she feeling for, Bishop? The bumps that were there, they went down. I mean, it was like, here, here is God touching her, and that touch is so real to her, she's looking for the... See, sometimes you get touched by God, and you don't even know you're touched by God until you run up the stairs and realize you did something that you couldn't do two days ago. 
greater works, greater works, greater works. And then he says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do also, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Verse 16, I need everybody to read that with me, please. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. I will ask the Father, and he, the Father, will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. I don't, I don't know how many of you remember the first time that the word born again hit the media. But it was when President Carter came into office and his, his sister was a born again. And so now everybody's trying to figure out what born again is. And the funniest thing in the world is to listen to unbelievers describe what it means to be born again. They have no clue. And he says, the world cannot receive him. He doesn't say will not. He just cannot. Cannot is ability. They are unable to see him. And sometimes you're talking to people about something, and they just can't see it. And we get frustrated. And so, oh, I'm, you, I know you know her. I know. And so you're going to be Pastor Barbara. You're going to make them know, and they can't know. My granddaughter was born deaf in one ear, and so her, her mom had to explain to the, 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 the teachers at school, she can't hear. It's not that she doesn't want to. She can't. It's not that they don't want to. They can't. And until we get to the place that we can accept the fact that the world can't, it's not that they don't want to. It's they can't. Look at the word another. Another. Say another. There are two words in the Greek that can be translated another. One is the word alos, and that is another of the same kind. The other word is the word heteros, H-E-T-E-R-O-S, and it's from where we get our word hetero. I knew you would go there. All right. <laughs> Heterogeneous. <laughs> heterodoxy, <laughs> uh, eventually heterosexual, all right? But I want you to see something. In, in this, this flower grouping, there are some flowers that are allos, and there are some flowers that are heteros. These are allos. This and this, is, they're heteros. This one and this one, they're not alike. They're flowers, but they're not alike. All right? What Jesus is saying, I'm going to ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. Not heteros, but alos. He's going to give you someone just like me. Just like me in every way. And so, so that, well, let me just get to it. It's, it's like, if I can make a distinction between the, the work of the Holy Spirit and the person of the Holy Spirit, and when I think of him in relation to that, realize that him of the Holy Spirit is him, Jesus Christ. That Jesus in his flesh and the Holy Spirit in person aren't different. They're the same. In fact, they're not just the same. They're one. You're, you're going to get this. I have confidence. Drop down with me to verse 25. These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you, but the helper, if I say the helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Go with me to verse 29. Now I have told you before it happens so that when it happens you may believe. I will not speak much more with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. This is such a critical verse for us. The ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. He has nothing in me. He has nothing in me. He has nothing on me. There isn't anything in me that he can put to the test. Chapter 15. Verse 26, 
when the helper comes, say please, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. He will testify about me. Now, I, I love this. I, I love an atmosphere like this. I love when the Holy Spirit is doing what he's doing like he's doing it. And I love what God is doing in this house. I love the word that Pastor Barbara brought to the chief shepherd of the house, the apostle of the house, that word that he gave, that, that he gave through her to him. And, and I, I, when, when she says, I have a word for this house, I just, I just stand back because sometimes I don't know what she's going to say. And so I, I put as much distance between myself and what she's going to say if it's not what I think <laughs> I want to identify with it. I said, we were, in, we were in Phoenix, and first time in this church, and I said, honey, pray for me. She says, okay. And she stands up, and she says, before I pray for my husband, I have a word for this church. And, um, and she says, the Holy Spirit has said to me that there's going to be a split in this church. Now, when she said that, the oxygen left the room, and I wanted to. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then she said, she says, but not all, not all splits are bad. And I just said, uh, I'm trying to think of one that wasn't. <laughs> but she went on to say that there was, there was going to be this division that was going to take place, an extension in that house that was going to be multiplied into three different groups. And, and you know, some, some words you have to wait for God to validate. You just can't say, pay attention to this. I mean, I said, God, help me to preach after this. And so, and, and he did. So we're in South Africa two months later. The pastor calls me and says, you have to know this. He says, that, wa that word your wife gave us has come to pass. He said, there's a church in the city that has a $7 million property, and they've been, everybody's been trying to get to them, but the pastor came and said, we want you to pastor this church. We're going to bring everything that we have under your resources. And within, within three weeks, they had multiplied into three different campuses. And he had put that word, he had put that word on their web page so that people could see it. It might still be there. Now, when, when, the word, when the word says something like this, what I say now you will not understand, but you'll understand later. Some prophecies you understand in the moment. Some, they just take a while to, to unfold. And Jesus says, what I'm doing to you now, you, won't, you don't understand what I'm doing, but you'll know later on. So when this thing was fulfilled, it, it, was, it was primarily the evidence that what was being said was by the Holy Spirit. Now, the reason I'm saying all of that is because we love the phrase, and you quoted it tonight, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I believe whenever prophecy is spoken in a group like this that gathers around the leadership of a man, that, that word isn't just for that man, and it's not just for that house. Jesus is sitting at the table and he says, he says these words, what I say to one, I say to all. <laughs>